Okay, we are back live inside the Cube, SiliconAngle.tv's uh, flagship telecast. We go out to the events, uh, talk to the smartest people we can find, and uh, we have our, ne our next <laughs> guest is uh, one of the smartest people that I know. He's been on the Cube many times, uh, an industry analyst, and uh, we're here in Orlando for IBM Edge 2012. A lot of news going on all around the web. Uh, E3, SiliconAngle.com's got all the coverage around E3 and tech trends, but here we're on the ground where storage is the center of the universe right now, enabling all kinds of uh, massive innovations around flash, software, infrastructure. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm, I'm Dave Vellante, and we're here with Mark Peters, who's a senior analyst at the Enterprise Strategy Group. Uh, Mark, first of all, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, good to be here. Appreciate you making I some think, time for us. I think it's good to be here, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Edge. You're attacking you know. from both sides today. Well, yeah. that's only so you can hear us. There's a little background okay. noise. <laughs> we have a speaker today, so. Um, yeah, so Edge is kind of IBM's coming out party. You know, I've said sort of a long time coming, and IBM said, well, we've had a number of these types of events, but this really is the sort of first branded storage event in a while that I've seen out of IBM. Yep. What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, so far so good. I mean, the, the turnout's really good, which is uh, surprising and impressive. As you know, this is a busy time of year. Yeah, right. Um, EMC World last week, um, Discover's on this week. I mean, not that those are specifically storage. Yeah, but, um, there, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Um, and as you say, I think your description of it as a coming out party is, is absolutely right. And it's refreshing to see, by the way. Um, you know, I mean, I think we all look in from the outside and see this kind of sleeping giant. Um, and we all know they have a lot of good stuff, but no one knows about it half the time. So it's good to see. We were talking earlier about um, contrasting this event, not necessarily the event, but the, the announcements at this event relative to last week at mm -hmm. EMC World, where there were, what, 42? It was a Mega Launch 2, they called there it. There were it was. 42. So it's just yeah, like this, a boatload yeah, of products. The sea yeah. of, of products. This is more about integration, about you know the portfolio, and you know, what do you make of that? Compare and contrast the two. Yeah, can I, can I tell you something on a side note first? And I promise yeah, to course, answer your yeah, question. So it, it was just intriguing, if you believe in sort of weird stuff. Um, so EMC was supposed to be 39 announcements. Did you know this? No, I didn't know this. And I had this great blog worked out because there were 39 announcements, and uh, when I checked in, I was on floor 39, um, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. But then they had to beat their last announcement to 41, so they made it 42. And when I checked in here, look, this is my table for the evening. <laughs> 39. There is something. There is something weird going on in the world. Anyway, uh, what was the question? So just compare the sort of two styles, two yeah. approaches, right? One is just this, this flood of products. Mm -hmm. um, here at Edge, we're not seeing a flood of products. I mean, we have them in the portfolio, but yeah. not, not a ton of new stuff. Right. Where's uh, the leadership? The question the I have is, where's the leadership? So, obviously you can argue yeah, both, sides. Mean with the both sides. You got, you know, I, I mean, the, on the numbers, EMC wins on the scoreboard, 42 yes. versus a handful. Sure. Um, so, you know, it's a <laughs> well, route yeah, but on the product launch, but let's talk about benefits, right? The integration. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, what does you, that mean for the customer? Right? I'm going to ask this. So, um, I mean, that's like been, eight questions. You know, asked. but you've been around. This, you've been around it a long time. I'm sure they could make this 43 announcements if they wanted, because you could split everything down and you just take, you know, a different press release out of every sentence of, of, that they've got. There's a lot here. Um, quite frankly, and this is both a, you know, a, a double-edged sword. There probably are 43 announcements here because half the ones IBM made over the last two years, no one noticed anyway because they've not been very good at it. The problem is they haven't had this coalescing, you know, this coming yeah. together. Coalescing, that's a good way to look so, at it. So, is that a good word? Yeah, good word, because okay. that's what's happening. Um, but no, absolutely true. And so I think, where's the leadership? I mean, clearly you cannot deny from the storage perspective. I mean, it would just be pushing big King Canute to say that EMC is not you know, a huge wave in, in this ocean. But um, I think from the perspective of an overall supplier, I mean, clearly it doesn't take much brain power, thanks for the nice intro, but it doesn't take much brain power to say that's where IBM's role is. I think what they did well today, I, I must say, I thought the, uh, the general sessions were very well done. What they did well was to put storage in context, not just to say we got more storage. Because again, the other thing with IBM historically, and that's why I think this really is a, a different thing for them, is I've been joking with people, but you could actually read the slides. Yeah. I mean, whenever I get a briefing from IBM or sit through one of their events, I know I need to bring binoculars, even for my laptop, because it's going to be so small and so detailed. Point and we've got font. this and we've wow. got this. <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and that wasn't, this was about context. Um, and this was about putting things in an overall IT context, linked to business, which everyone tries to do. Every storage presentation. They actually did some good marketing. That was actually quite frightening, I know. It I mean, there's well, some marketing here. Yes. They're marketing their product. Absolutely, absolutely. I can't, I, and their solutions. I, there were a couple of notes, if I can just refer, yeah. or did you sure. want to no, do another question? Um, I just thought these were interesting because being IBM, you know, they do a lot of research and I just thought some of the numbers and the background business that they have were interesting. The ones I, I jotted down were the, um, 
the global CEO survey that they just completed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've covered this already, but nope. um, where IT was for the first time apparently noted as the number one external pressure on CEOs. That was interesting. Get this, 80% of those CEOs expect more complexity in their environments, yet only less than 50% think they have a plan to solve it. Um, you tie that with things like the other thing, there's an MIT survey that IBM sponsored and, and, and did with MIT, I presume, where it says that analytically savvy company organizations are 2.2, to be precise, 2.2 times more likely to outperform their peers. So, the, 2.2 times more likely what? To outperform, outperform their, their yeah, peers. Yeah, sure. So, there are, there are others as well, but the, the point being that unless you can pull all this stuff together, both in a marketing sense, yeah. but what I think they did really well, quite frankly, was you know, we're all used to seeing presentations where, you know, there's the first slide that says, data's growing, the world is complex. Right, I've now got 10 products. They spent a good amount of time explaining why there is a problem. Um, and I guess it's because they have a portfolio of products, they can do that because there really isn't any aspect of the problem that they can't say something about or address in some form or fashion. One of the things that, um you know, we've been talking a lot about is this whole integrated systems, converged infrastructure, whatever you want to call it, um, attacking that labor problem, yes. the IT labor problem. What's, you know, ESG does a ton of work, and you guys do a lot of surveys, you talking to a lot of customers, you talk to a lot of the technology suppliers. What are you guys seeing around that convergence? I mean, it looks like it's a real trend. Yeah, it really um, is, yeah. What's your take on that? So, first off, for us old guys, That'll be us too, I know you're young, <laughs> but um, for us old guys, it's, it's interesting. Talk about what goes around, comes around, doesn't it strike you as like System 34s and that sort of thing? And, uh, X86 you know. mainframe? <laughs> exactly, I remember, and I'm going to get to your question, there was a great quote years and years ago in, in when I lived in the UK, um, and it was, you know, the mainframe is dead, long live the large server. Um, and it's always struck with me, because really that's, that's what this is about. So, to, to answer your question, um, first off, yes, people want simplicity. I think what's in interesting about IT, we, we've talked about it as a utility, or we talk about storage as a utility, um, and people have talked for ages about buying chunks of IT. But it's never really been possible, because it was too complex, it didn't really work very well, but we're finally getting there, both from a software and a hardware perspective. Um, and I don't know if it works for you as an analogy, but um, imagine, so you're sitting at home somewhere, on the days you get home, and um, you know, you're sitting there, you're doing something in Word for the sake of discussion, and then you want to move to Excel or PowerPoint. Imagine having to change to a different laptop to do that. But that's how we've run IT, and we've accepted it. Now, some of it, I think, has been accepted, and there's an important point here. S some of it has been accepted because the people running it are used to doing it that way, that's how it is, and by the way, that's what their jobs depend on. But I think one of the values, if you like, of the economic stress that we've been suffering is people aren't going to college wishing they could become a storage administrator. Um, they might want to be IT administrators. Howard um, Goldstein would argue with you, by the way. <laughs> you know Howard. No. So the question I he have for storage administrators. That so can but we got to sorry, just to finish. But we got to find an economic way to do things, and that means bringing things together and using them all better, which is why virtualization is is um, so popular right now. And they made a comment about storage virtualization accelerating faster than than um, desk, um, yeah. server virtualization yeah. when it was in its heyday. Um, the question I have for you as an analyst is that IBM to pull off to pull off this kind of integration. Um, big data is all about analytics. It's not even in the storage group. So, totally like what you said and what I've used about the context of storage because it is an element yes. of the overall solutions that the customers want. Mm -hmm. And they can buy cloud from IBM or other places, but analytics is a different division. Do you think IBM can pull this off? I mean, they're like a battleship. I mean, cross-functionally, different sales teams, different groups. Do you think they can pull that off? And if they, if they do, what's, what, what do they need to uh, accomplish to do that? Um, so, really good question which actually if you saw the comedian today, that means I have no clue what the answer is. I think the, uh, the best answer to that is actually to look at this conference because if you'd asked me six months ago whether they could pull this off, I would say no because they're all different units that are actually coming together here. The, mm. the, the topic might be storage, but you've got the Tivoli people here and you've got the analytics people yeah, here and absolutely. so on. And so, and also having a bit of an inside track here, you know, having been talking to them over the last few months yeah. about this, I know the machinations it takes in IBM to get so you can say Everything that you, agrees. you can say that they're on, they are doing it. They're walking the talk internally. I, I, I think this is actually yeah, I would, showing that, which is I, which is kind of an odd thing to say, but I think it really I, is. I think you're making a really good point because they finally storage has taken the lead on pulling these pieces together and showcasing it as part of a storage event, as opposed to sort of tagging on to other people's you know the, drafting behind other people's yeah, the, uh, the, activities. The other thing, um, and 
you probably both know me that I read a lot into small things. I think not just the devil, but I think the delight is in the detail. Um, and so the other thing that's really interesting, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to see many of the main sessions sitting here, but just a couple. There were also statements of direction. Now, again, we all work around the business. Everyone tells you what they're doing in the future. Some deliver, some don't. But what was interesting is to get a statement of direction signed off in IBM. Oh. It's, it's like the white smoke out of the Vatican. You know, it yeah. takes forever. You don't know if you're going to get it. Um, and so, back to your question, do I think they can do it? The fact they've got any statements of direction at all is in and of itself amazing, because IBM doesn't do that. The fact they've got a whole ton, which tries to show that smarter... Uh, storage is actually going to be real and hopefully not just something they do for Orlando and then we all forget about in July. Um, knowing the work it will have taken to get this event and all those announcements together, yeah. that's yeah. why I'm kind of drinking the Kool-Aid. We got to talk about Flash before we run out of time. We have. Because Mark yes. is uh, one of the leading you know, observers of the Flash space. Again, ESG, you guys do tons of surveys. Um, what are you saying these days about Flash? What are you telling customers? What's going on in the market? Um, okay, well you know that old joke about rumors of my death are ex greatly exaggerated, so Flash has been the other way around, which is you know, rumors of it being everywhere have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> um, well actually I should restate that, rumors of it taking over from disk have been ridiculously exaggerated. Um, we're years away from that and it will require changes in technology I think to happen. But what, what's clear right now is that Flash has definitely gone through that hockey stick of acceptance people are beginning to understand its value. At the end of the day, it's spend a lot of money here and get a lot of benefit somewhere else. And it's economic benefit as well as performance benefit. In other words, the performance is a means to an end as well as an end in it's itself. It's a business productivity impact. Absolutely, and that ultimately means that you essentially, because people, lots of people still think it's expensive, which it is, but you spend an, a judicious amount of, for the expensive stuff and you get a huge back-end benefit. Now, Again, to come back to your question, what are we telling people at the moment? The game has moved. It's no longer about the hardware. Um, other than the hardware has to be integrated and go into different places and we'll have multiple iterations of it. But what the game about now is orchestration. You heard a little of that here today. You're hearing a lot of it from other organizations as well. In other words, guess what? It comes back to software because so much of IT comes back to software management. Orchestration is the term we're using. You're going to need Flash to be not just SSD down in the system, not just in the storage controller. Some can be in the network. You heard today about it going up into the servers. And somehow we've got to manage all that both within and across applications and services. That's where the game is moving. How far does the price point have to move now to really get that mass adoption? Obviously, the trend lines are right there. It's right in line. Across the board, flashes everywhere, as mm -hmm. Ed Walsh was saying. Um, still, price is a concern yes. from the price point. Where do you see that falling right now? Well, you see, actually, I don't think price is a concern. So, to, if I can hit it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, going back to what David and I were just saying, it's if, if you use it judiciously and correctly, you can make that argument already. And I'm not just talking about the all flash providers who have an argument using deduplication and other methods to get the effective price down. I'm talking about the absolute price when you use it as... as a, in a systems element. As a small percentage yes. of an overall system, which is why the orchestration matters so yeah, much. Yeah. Um, and again, if I can be... The price follows it as a as a fallacy right now. The what, sorry? The prices, that's just a, not really a big issue. Well, the right other now. thing is if you look at them, and I don't know where my hands are on the screen, but if you look at the price of both spinning disk and flash, yeah, you, you different people argue it's a bit like watching unemployment or the trend lines. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're both heading in the same direction, not unemployment and the trend lines, flash, yeah. flash and disk. They're both going to come down over yeah. the next couple of years. It's about its judicious, careful application, and it's about tiering and caching, which is what makes it valuable. Um, I haven't seen anything that says Flash is going to, in any time that we need to worry about the next couple of years, yeah. take over from spinning disk, it's just silly. And if I can just finish that rant uh, on one other thing, we, we'll stay with this uh, caching use, which is the main use. There are certain specific applications where the performance is what you need, but usually it's just, you know, you add this turbo power to the overall system, and as you say, to get economic business benefits. Yep. But we're going to still continue. This is, I think, a really important point, um, if I may, since I've got the mic, um, is that unless and until all storage is either free or the same price, we're going to have a hierarchy of storage. That means, and this is, this is the crucial point, we're going to have a hierarchy of solid state as well. We're so used to having it on disk that we've forgotten to even think about it. It's just natural. You have this SATA stuff and this SAS stuff and this fiber channel stuff and some goes faster and some makes cash and some's down here and we call it near line. We're going to have that same thing with solid state well. If you look at the, as well, if you look at the difference between um, the lowest level SSDs out in the storage system and the stuff that gets put up into the uh, servers, it's orders of magnitude, both in terms of price and performance. So we're going to have a range of that as well. So we've seen, um 
historically, last couple of years. You saw a run on uh, enterprise data warehouse companies like Natiza and Vertica and Greenplum and, and, and Astra Data. And we saw the sort of tier 1.5 guys. I know a lot of people don't like that term, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the compellents yeah. and the three parts, you know, yeah. billions of dollars in acquisitions. We saw the Extreme IO acquisition, I guess it was announced uh, last week of the week before. A couple of weeks, yeah, last week. We had Rich Napolitano on, he said, ah, we didn't announce the number, but the, you know, the whisper number is 300, 340, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it was a substantial yeah. number for a company that didn't have a product to market yet. Mm -hmm. So would you expect a similar run on flash companies? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Um, Yes, in a word, I'm not sure what else I can tell you. Yes, I think so. Um, particularly given what I just said, it's not just a matter of saying, I mean, now, EMC, for example, have a lot of offerings um, in Flash. I mean, Tucci has been saying this for ages, that you know he's doubling down on Flash, and it's going to be everywhere, and EMC probably has the broadest, broadest portfolio. If you buy into what I just said about the hierarchy of Flash, the need to have it in every place for that economic advantage, forget the performance. Performance is a means to an end. All storage is about economics, whatever else we like to tell you, tell each other. And you said earlier, it's all about the software. It's all about mm -hmm. software, but just to finish the point I was making, so um, what this means is that just because you see other vendors, big vendors, with one or two offerings, doesn't mean to say they have a complete flash offering from soup to nuts. And I think that's why we'll see more buyouts over the, the coming months and years, yeah. So um, do you think that was a... A, a, a low price, like the I, think of IBM and XIV. Let's say it was 300 million, right? And then you saw Compellent and you know go for a billion, three par go for 2.4, yeah. Isilon go for two billion. Do you think we're going to see like massive valuations, or do you think it's going to be sort of trial and error? Yeah, this this will sound very odd, and I'm sure there are all CFOs in lots of companies watching this who will hate my answer. I don't think valuations are based on value when it comes to these purchases. Uh, a lot of it is strategic. We need that before someone else gets it. We need it to complete our portfolio. And, and the thing for Extreme IO particularly is I'm not sure publicly we all yet really know what's there. We know what has been stated publicly, um, but I suspect there's rather more to the purchase than just the all-flash Yeah, so array. the question is, given your scenario that you know the, the demise of spinning disk has largely been exaggerated, Yes. Um, Reconcile that with the economic impact. So is this, is this largely incremental? In other words, can it command the valuations without taking on the $50 billion spinning disk business because mm -hmm. of that incremental economic value? Or does it have to eat into that disk and it's going to take longer than many people think? Um, well, so there's, there's two parts to the answer. The first is that it's incremental in the sense that you only need to sprinkle in a few percent to have a big difference. So I think it certainly drives down, and we've many of us have spoken about this for a long time, it certainly drives down the, um, the likelihood of you know 15K fiber channel being out there for very long, and ultimately SaaS as well, um, because you, you know it's like putting some wonder liquid in your gas that suddenly turns your car into you know faster and does 100 miles to the gallon. Um, and so you're going to buy that as long as the price is not too ridiculous. Right. Um, can it continue to command extra? Absolutely, for that very reason, because it has that economic benefit. And the other point to, to your question is that, again, you don't have to attend many of these conferences or see what many of us do. I don't know whether storage capacity demand is chicken or egg. Mm. Do you? No, you're right. I mean, all I know is it's elastic. It's elastic and exactly. So if we can make the whole thing more economic by spending money on expensive stuff called solid state, yeah. then actually we might grow the overall demand for storage because now we'll all want not just pictures on no, our phones, we'll need 3D video on yeah, our phones. Or which whatever we, else is next that we haven't thought of. Yeah. Um, that, I had a great little side story, but I won't take you there. Okay. Oh, okay, I will if I've got go time. For it. No, yeah, no, no, go it's for just, it. It's just great. We all have that. that They're not that. doing jumping jacks yet. <laughs> yeah, we all have that great story from when we were young and, you know, selling this stuff. And I remember I wasn't that young, but, you know, back in the 80s, I was selling to, um, to a bank in North London, swept their floor, um, actually, of IBM. That's convenient for the conference. And uh, replaced it with something else. Doesn't really matter. But the long story short, um, and you're thinking it's long already, was that this equipment, mid-80s, it's not that long ago, we had to close the street, crane it in on a Saturday morning, it was all very exciting, it was 10 gigabytes. And, and like a million bucks. <laughs> Big deal, right? And I was out the other day, um, you know, SanDisk, they, they had something the size of my fingernail, which is 64 gig. 
and yet people will go into Costco or wherever they go to buy their card for their camera and they'll say it's too expensive, it's not big enough, I can't fit all my video on there. So to your point about elasticity, yeah. it isn't going anywhere anytime We're soon. We're running out of storage capacity so, all the time. In the so to, um, exactly. to get your perspective on, Dave asked a couple questions earlier to some of the guests at IBM and I, the one of them, I forget who it was, um, didn't get the answer or question, but you, you alluded to the fact that services revenue around the consultants is going to be big. Uh, around big data and with flash and storage evolving. Do you have any perspective on how you see the channel partners em emerging from these from these solution sets? Because we always compare the client server, talk about going back to the old days, but yeah. you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, HP servers and you know, all the server vendors were making a killing, yeah. but yet the guys deploying the ERPs and the software packages were making even more money. Right. So huge boom in the management consulting, so back in the Deloitte and Tusa, the centers of the world, or I think it was Anderson Consulting back in the day, but remember those days, it was glory days, when people were making a lot of money, so we kind of compare that now. Do you see that same um, I, I think robustness or frothiness? Um, no. Is robust and frothy the same? But no. anyway, I mean, one's but I healthy, th one's you know. oh, well, that's why. That's why. That's why I'm checking. I'm not sure. Well, whichever one's the good one. I say one. robust is, is good. It frothy also, is depends how you you know. Well, it also depends. Bubbly. It, it also depends which side you're looking from, doesn't it? But yeah, anyway. I mean, um, it's certainly bubbly right now. But no one's. I don't see people walking in and saying, "Hey, I got your cloud for you in a box." The channel partners are not really. It's not turnkey. I mean, EMC nailed it with with v specs with that. Right. But right. I, I think we are going to head in that direction. I think the as we become more commoditized, as we get down to um, more in a box, what are you smiling at now? The camera. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's a good answer. This I is like a, the this answer. Is well, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's the a right good, answer. It's the right answer, yeah. There was, a, there was a great quote from the gentleman, I can't remember, the Rochester Medical. He said something about infrastructure is the new ringtone. Yeah. I just thought that was a really good quote. But um, so if I find him, thank you very much, sir. But. Um, there is definitely a propensity and a desire by users, coalesce and propensity, two good yeah. words, but to, to buy IT in chunks. I think, again, um, not to be too ageist, but those of us who grew up in the, um, the fighting world of plug compatible manufacturers and, and hey, do I buy this disc or that disc? Users don't care. Again, the gentleman from Germany, the customer was talking on the stage, he was wonderful. He said, I love hardware, I love software. And then he said, no, I don't really. I just care about what it does for me. Yeah. And that's true. That's a real user speaking. Yeah. No one really wants to spend ages deciding which storage system Does to it buy. work? Does it meet the requirements? Absolutely. And although we all spend our lives you know, talking about the intricacies of it, the importance is what it does for a business. Well, I mean, I'm smiling mainly because you know, cloud is, you know, can be viewed as a word about outsourcing. You're renting, sure. you're basically renting. Sure. Yeah. So with that comes services. And, and, yeah. and I just, we just, we're just tracking, we're trying to get the state of the market. But if I can come, so the reason I thought that guy's quote about the um, guy, that gentleman, that lovely client customer, um, was so astute is because, just think, none of us run our own, if, if you view infrastructure as a ringtone, which is really, I think, where we're heading. You don't go and then service your own phone line, do you? You just pick up the phone to whoever happens to provide it, be it the Comcast or your phone company or whoever, you know, maybe you're just wireless, and you say, fix it. You're not interested in going and finding the wires and putting them together and deciding whether you've got the right electronic switchboard or whatever else you're doing. Um, it's just a ringtone. I just expect it to be there. And, you know, it looks to me very much, it's not going to happen instantly, of course, it's not going to happen in the next five years, but we, we certainly seem to be in a decade decade or two of moving towards IT as a ringtone. Okay, Mark, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, great to see you again. Um, great commentary from an analyst who's covering both EMC and IBM, and all the top guys in storage. Uh, thanks for your perspective and uh, we're looking forward to having you on again. Uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.